In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to perform a Welch's t-test in SPSS. Now, Welch's t-test is a test that can be performed to test a hypothesis that two means are equal, even when the variances are statistically significantly different from each other, as well as unequal sample sizes. I don't think a lot of people know that, but Welch's t-test is also robust to unequal variances and unequal sample sizes uh, at the same time. I'll show you a reference at the end of this video that supports that uh, contention. Now there are actually two ways of doing Welch's t-test in SPSS. One way that you know for sure it's doing it and the other way that is doing it automatically and you might not know. But I'll show you the first way. Analyze, compare means, one-way ANOVA. Put your grouping variable in here, your dependent variable in here, and you have to click on options. And there's actually the Brown Forsyth test here too, which is a good test for unequal variances and unequal sample size, and arguably is even better than Welch's test. Uh, I'll, but I'll do a separate video on on that topic. So once you've done that, you have pretty much got everything set up for a Welch's t-test. Now I'm doing it in ANOVA, even though I've got two groups. But that's totally fine. These ANOVA and Welch's t and Brown Forsyth work when there are only two groups. So click on OK. And the result uh, for the standard ANOVA, which is basically a t-test here, if you square root the 11.946, uh, you'll get a t-value. But down here, you get robust tests of equality of means. So this is robust to homogeneity of variance violation and sample size. And you can see that Welch and Brown Forsyth actually give the same exact result in this case. And you can see that the statistic is equal to 6.402 with one degree of freedom in a numerator and 4.391 in a denominator. And you do not get a statistically significant result in this case, p equal 0 0.059. Now, the other way of doing this, and, and this is uh, just something that I've, of, I've often wondered exactly what SPSS was doing in this case, is that if you do a regular ANOVA uh, independent sample t-test, and you put groups in here, and you put 0 and 1, and put your dependent variable in here, and you click on OK, you actually get the same test that uh, the Welch's test is provided in the ANOVA. So in here we have uh, the equal variances assumed and equal variances not assumed, and in this case we get the t-value of negative 2.53 with degrees of freedom of 4.390 and a p-value of 0 0.059. And that actually equals the same result that we had from the uh, ANOVA. We have here the, uh, st we have a statistic that's 6.402, but if you actually square root that value, 6.402 square rooted equals 2.53 and that actually equals the 2.53 that you see here. The fact that it's negative is irrelevant and it, there are no negative F values. So the Welch's F test that's being performed in the one-way utility gives you exactly the same result that you get for the equal variance is not assumed test. It's just that SPSS doesn't name it. It should be naming it the Welch's T test but it doesn't for probably a technical reason, probably not a good one. Well, there are two ways of doing Welch's t-test, uh, and uh, it's a very attractive test when you have homogeneity of variance assumption that's not satisfied, uh, and you have any, and whether you have equal variance, uh, equal sample sizes or not, it's actually still a, quite a good test. So that's how you do a Welch's t-test in SPSS. So you've got two ways, the automatic way and uh, the non-automatic way. Hope you enjoyed this one. I'll catch you next time.